Hey guys, it's a beautiful wintry day here in Canada. We're looking at a Trek Rail 9.9 XX1 Axis with the Bosch LED remote and the Kiox 300. These are both part of the Bosch Smart System with their new CX motor, even though apparently it offers the same 85 Newton meters of torque and it's kind of the same hardware. This is the Smart System and in the future it can do more. For now, we're a little bit limited, but it does have an app. To me, this is really, it's kind of three things in one. There's the LED remote, which you can use to operate the bike all on its own. Then there's the removable Kiox 300 display panel. You kind of spring it down from the top and then lift up like that. The new Kiox 300 appears to charge directly from the bike power source, the main battery. Whereas the older Intuvia and original Kiox, I think they had rechargeable coin batteries inside that eventually would wear out and you kind of have to replace them. So I feel like that's an improvement here as well. Two inches diagonal on this display. It's very similar to the other Kiox, just it's Kiox 300. There are a few changes on the readouts and we'll get into that in a minute. But let's start out just with the LED remote. So to power the bike on, there's a, a button on top here. Press that comes to life pretty quickly and there's a little LED dance here with the blue dots. And then every time it says warning, avoid distracted riding, read the safety instructions. At first I was like, oh, is this touch screen? Does not seem like that. You have to press the little square icon or select icon over here. So we do that and then you get into the standard readouts. But again, let's focus on the LED remote. If we didn't have the Kiox 300, all we would have is these five charge level indicators. And at first I thought, do these represent 20% increments? You know, 100% divided by five. Well, no, they actually step down in halves. And so if we were at 90%, we'd only see four blue dots and then the top one would turn white. So that's sort of a half step. And I think that's really nice because it is, it is important to sort of estimate your range, especially if you're really on a long ride, you don't want to get stranded with a heavy bike. Of course, this is an all carbon fiber, you know, super premium expensive e-bike, but it still weighs quite a bit because we've got the new Bosch Power Tube 750. So, you know, versus the 625, we do have a little bit more weight. That's part of the Bosch Smart System as well. So it's really nice that we've got kind of the 10% increments. And then we've got this other line here that fills in as soon as we change assist levels. So green, it's the lowest level of assist. That's Eco. And then we go up to Tour Plus, which is blue. EMTB, kind of a purple, turbo, red. And, and that's really it. You know, we've got these other buttons here, but they don't really do anything for the LED remote. Even the select button, it's just, just kind of there. One thing that's interesting is the plus button does have uh, a light icon. So if you hold down on that, if this bike had lights, it would activate them. If we hold the uh, minus icon here, it activates walk mode and the LEDs turn to this like white kind of uh, moving, pattern, but the bike doesn't do anything until you start to move it yourself. And then the motor will kick in. You can see the little guy there saying, yep, yeah, we got walk assist happening. Again, nice if you've got a heavier bike and you get a flat tire, or maybe it's a commuter setup and you need to move the bike without dumping your cargo. There's one more goodie to show you with the LED remote. And I almost missed it and I wanted to go in and, and double check, but at the bottom of the plus and the minus, there's a little rubber cover with a tool icon and a USB-C charging port. I went online, I've got some documentation that I'll link to in the forums. Initially I thought, oh, it's got the tool thing, maybe this is just for diagnostics and stuff, but now you upgrade this thing with the smartphone app. So I was you know, double checking, it looks like it's five volts, 600 milliamp hours, which is enough to charge some of the newer devices. If you have your smartphone up here, maybe you're using it for GPS or something, and maybe you got a, a speaker or a light or something. I mean, this smart system is going to be on more bikes in the future. Really cool that they've included that. The position of it isn't perfect in my opinion, because look, we got this dropper lever right here. So I actually have a USB-C charging cable right here. I actually plug in the USB type A port and then use this to charge my GoPros. So I'm kind of going in reverse here. You might need to get a special custom one of these if you're going to charge your phone or something just go on amazon but if i if i plug this in look at that i mean it's it's right there in the way of the dropper lever and you know you can get like a right angle one of these and hopefully it stays in because i can imagine you know it's it doesn't seem that 
secure to me. I guess it kind of locked in there, but just something to, to, to think about when you're setting this up. I mean, gravity's gonna be pulling this down if we're hitting dr drops and stuff with a, a mountain bike like this, and you'd have to wrap this up here. It's, it's not perfect. I kind of like it if it was on top or maybe right here. That would be great. You could get a really short cable, and then it would be sideways versus pointing right down. But it's just an interesting situation because the Intuvia, the Kiox, the Nyon, they all have micro USB charging ports and the Purion, the really simple small display, it does, but that one's only for diagnostics. So like most of the current generation displays do let you charge. This new one appears to, but the positioning isn't great. And we have the highest capacity battery of all. And on, on this bike, on this Trek 9.9 XX1 axis, you know, we've got electric everything. It's like electric shifting, electric tire pressure gauges, suspension gauges, even the dropper post. So everything is using electricity and as much as possible, I, I would enjoy having a big rechargeable battery to pull from, you know? And, and that includes my phone, it includes, I, I'm just really, I'm focusing on this because I, I hope Bosch hears that it. it's nice to have and if just a little bit of thought on how they position it could make it so much more usable. So. That's pretty much it for the LED remote on its own. However, it's the remote not the Kiox 300 that connects with Bluetooth to the smartphone app. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that next. So there it is, it's the Flow app, which to me was a little bit confusing. I thought it should have been called the Smart System app because that's what we're dealing with here is the Smart System. When I searched the App Store, I had to double check that I was on the right one. So there's me, it says here's Quartz e-bike, we're ready to go. Congratulations on the Smart System. Here's your battery. I love that it shows battery percentage here. It's even more precise than what we had on the LED remote. We've got range here, and that's dynamic depending on the level of assist that we're in. So we're in turbo, which again is that red, and it, it's estimating 36 miles. We can customize some of the ride modes here. Only turbo and eco though. We can't change EMTB or Tour Plus. Tour Plus and EMTB, they're kind of similar. EMTB gives you more power and, and kind of zippy feeling, and Tour is a little bit more conservative and efficient. Uh, but basically, they're giving you the full range of power and torque, and it really depends on how hard you're pedaling. It's not just like low, medium, high. It's like, well, maybe high if you're really working for it, or maybe low if you're just kind of relaxed. So it's, it's a way to be efficient and a little bit more dynamic and responsive. I think that's kind of cool. And I guess I can see why they can't really give you a whole lot of adjustability on these dynamic modes. So if we go into turbo, we could change assistance, the support level, um, change how dynamic it feels, soft or powerful when you start. And then we can even adjust the top speed and the maximum torque. So there's really a lot that you can do in here. Interesting that 19 miles per hour is the top speed. I've always thought it was kind of 20. That's the top assisted speed limit in the United States or in, in North America. In Europe, 25 kilometers per hour, 15.5 miles per hour. And everything's color coded just like we saw on the LED remote. Then down here, we can see how many miles we've gone for each different level of assist, which is kind of cool. There's a map tool so you can see where you've gone. And in fact, this thing automatically records your, your routes and keeps a, a log for you. And then there's this statistics thing, which is pretty cool. This would connect to Apple Health or Strava. We can see that over here in connected services. So Apple Health data, I'm not using that. So it's, it's just kind of empty right now. We can change my profile a little bit if we want, delete trips, delete your account. It's actually fairly simple right now. It's not too, too deep. You know, there's marketing messages help center, feedback, terms and conditions, privacy policies, service description, corporate information. And one of the last things you can do here is check for updates so you can update the bike yourself without having to go into a shop. I think that's pretty cool. So this isn't the kind of app where I'd wanna mount my phone and, and expect to see how fast I'm going or you know how much energy the bike is putting out compared to me. It's, it's really just sort of a set it and then forget it. So now we move on to the Kiox 300 itself. The cool thing is that depending on where you left it, which which menu, when you turn the bike off and on, and we, we boot it back up. Waiting, waiting, Kiox 300, okay. It gives us the distracted driving thing again. It stays on that, that last menu. So that's really convenient. Um, again, I wanna reiterate that the LEDs on the button pad, 
and the display right here, they're both adaptive. So if it's really bright out, they'll be brighter. And if it's dark, they're gonna dim so you don't dazzle your eyes. That's the, the Bosch terminology, but basically you don't wanna ruin your night vision. So I really appreciate that because there are a lot of e-bikes out there, especially the cheaper ones with big circular LEDs that you, they're always on super bright. And sometimes I'll use like masking tape just to kind of mute that a little bit for night riding so I'm not getting blinded or I'll, I'll tip it and kind of swivel it out of the way. This thing is mounted uh, really nicely. It's elevated and it, it fits right over uh, the, the brake lever housing and it's just, um, it's actually really nice. I, I At first I wasn't sure, some of the, the Bosch button pads are, they're just not as easy to click as this. This is very tactile, you can hear it, you can feel it. It feels, it's very reachable, it's ergonomic. I'm, this is like becoming my, my favorite uh, control pad as it were and I'm not sure I'm in love with where we've mounted the Kiox 300 on this particular bike because you know you're way up here riding and you might want to kind of glance down and that's the idea with the the colors here is that you don't have to read something you can just kind of sense it and get familiar with the colors which um, again they're they're consistent across the app and the the different devices but it's still you know it's it's a lot of looking if the display is way down here now this is pretty pretty well protected this is an all mountain bike right with 160 millimeter travel 150 in the rear it's you know this is a mountain bike and if you if you dropped it or flipped it or something like that it feels like the display is really well protected and it comes back to being able to remove that which i love but let's jump back into the different uh, menus here so we've got this left and right page button select plus minus that we went through before so i'm going to go back to the very first one it's got a little square icon next to it so you know battery percentage assist level is always shown along with the colors clock and then settings down here we'll go to settings at the very end if i page to the the right we get your average speed max speed distance riding time speed it's like current speed again it's in kilometers per hour right now but i'll show you how to change that later range so that's again dynamic based on what level of assist so if we go from eco up to tour plus our estimated range uh, changes significantly so we drop way down to 68 on EMTB and turbo 58 they, they have a lot of space here so I guess they just created this little it's like a measuring tape icon to signal like that's range and then down here we have like a little battery infographic 94% kind of wonder if this ticks down as you use the battery that'd be kind of cool power watts cadence RPM, so you know how quickly you spin. One of the cool things about the the Bosch Performance Line motors is that they support over 120 RPM per second, which is just really high. It means you can go spinning, 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 which happens when you downshift as you're approaching like a big climb or something. And on some of the older systems, if you did that, you'd lose motor support. So I love that they they still give you really high cadence support. There we go. We're back to the the first menu here with settings. We press the little square button. And now we've got a bunch of different information. Now, see how there's a right arrow there? We can either press right to get into it or the, the square. So I'm gonna press the square. We can reset our range, you know, auto reset so it can reset itself. Wheel circumference, components. Let's look into this, control unit, drive unit, battery display. Let's get into some of these. So I'm, I'm, this time I'm using the right arrow, component, LED remote. Serial number, part number, software. Okay, now I'm using left. Drive unit. Serial number, part number, operating hours, total distance, software version. Just tons of information here. Battery. Yep, power tube, 750. Serial number, part number, software. Display. Kiox 300. Yep, okay. So just kind of a lot of really detailed information. Let's get uh, back here to the system. It's so got language, units. This is where we can change it to, I guess I'm, I'm gonna have to press the square to change this to Imperial. So that would be miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour. Time, we can change the time format. Brightness, automatic, that's what I was talking about before. And uh, settings reset. So that's, that's interesting. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Yes, no. Okay, we don't wanna do that right now. And then information, contact, if you've got questions, frequently asked questions, there's their website, certificates, 
it's like UL certified. Bosch does a really good job with that. So that's kind of it, you know, that's the system. Um, it does automatically power off, but if we power it off ourselves, it gives us the trip summary distance, ride time, average speed, max speed, average power, average cadence, calories, total distance, see you. I, I wanna go back in one more time and uh, just describe maybe one of my, my favorite views that's carried over from the original Kiox here. It's this one right here. So it shows your current speed and then there's this like loop and it fills up with motor power and human power. So the, the, the solid dark color, that's how hard the motor's working. And then the little gradient color on top of it, that's your input. So you can see how you plus the bike really combine to create a good level of assistance. Uh, you know, how hard you're working versus how hard the bike is working. That comes back to which level of assist you're using and, and how you dial in those settings. Um, I hope this helps you guys. I enjoy going deep into these because there's there's so many settings. And one of the really neat things about the, the Bosch product line is that most of their displays in the past have been um, cross compatible. So if you have like the original Bosch Performance Line CX, you could have a Pyreon or an Intuvia, and then you could upgrade to a Kiox or a Nyon now, you know, this is a brand new generation, the smart system. So you're, you're really limited to just these right now. And uh, you can't, it's not as cross compatible. And so if you're making a choice right now to buy an electric bike and it's like, oh, do I pay more for a smart system enabled bike? I just wanted to be real thorough to show you what you get, what's different. And I, and I really do like this button pad. I mean, this is kind of replaces the uh, Pyreon. It doesn't give you a bunch of readouts the way that one does, but I, I do like the way that they handled the LEDs and the charge level and stuff. So anyway, I'll be doing a review on this bike and um, just more updates in the future. I love you guys. I hope this helps. Have fun. We'll see you next time.